This is the first standalone BCS National Championship game here in Pasadena. Vince Young, of course, beat the guy that haunted you there, galloping to a couple yeah. of late touchdowns to beat you. He was on the sidelines along with Ricky Williams and so many former greats. Bama rolls in here as the favorite. Favorites haven't been able to win this game that often. And look at the early going. Texas with pressure. Houston storming in. The Texas defensive lineup, big start to this game. They would force a punt. And then Corey Reamer checks to a fake punt. Inexplicable. P.J. Fitzgerald throws, and it's picked off by Blake Gideon. What was going on here, Pete? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You would think when you have a fake punt, you usually have a way to get out of it when the look isn't right. That was a soft look. They never should have even tried it. I don't know where they missed the communication, but they should have checked out and gone ahead and kicked the football. Saban <laughs> cannot believe it. So here comes Colt McCoy in the long runs with great field position. But McCoy will be hit on this design running play by big Marcel Darius. Right away, he knows he's hurt. He had a great football game. Darius was all over the place with a big touchdown play as well. He really was a force in, in the first half of this McCoy game. I would say it wasn't painful. He just couldn't feel his arm. It was completely <laughs> dead, obviously. Major concern. And in comes the true freshman, Garrett Gilbert. He's from Austin, Texas, the all-time leader in the state. Passing yards, the 2008 Gatorade and Parade National Player of the Year, but just 15 for 26 in his freshman season in nine games in Mop Up. And it well, wasn't against Alabama. And it really was that goal line stand right there kept him to two field goals, and that was true. Right here. That's right, Lee. This was huge. Great on third goal and goal, stand. Gilbert has to throw it away. So three plays from the three, and they got to settle for three. Yes, yeah, sir. McCoy, meanwhile, goes to the locker and to get checked off. And this was a tactic the short kickoff. Yeah, Alabama caught napping. Yeah, they sure did. They got him on this one here. They mishandled, misplayed the uh, the reception on the kick, and it turned over right there. It was a great play for Texas. You want to talk about miscommunication. As a returner, you never, ever let a kickoff hit the ground. It's a live ball. You have to run up and catch it. You can even fair catch it to protect yourself. We got yeah. two early special teams gaps for Alabama, and once again, Texas is set up in good field position. And, and got a total of six points. Yeah, this is third and five here. Dan Buckner had a chance to make a catch. Arenas was in the neighborhood, but the Texas receivers in the first half played very poor football. Had a chance to make plays and couldn't. Another field goal there, and it's 6-0. But Alabama dodged it then. The Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram, would get going. Finally, the offensive line creating some creases. There's a nine-yard gain. Later in the drive, Ingram again will be stopped just short of the goal line. This is right at the end of the first quarter. Bam, in scoring position. First to goal at the beginning of the second. Watch here, Big Cody. It's a flinch here. It's a false start. He's at the top of that blocking formation. They don't catch it. He flinched early, then settled in, and Ingram walks up the middle. 7-6, Alabama would take the lead. Next possession for Texas. Gilbert in now on third and 15. Hit by Courtney Upshaw as he throws the ball and it's incomplete. It was rough in the early going for the freshman. Yeah, it sure was. You know, he was, I think he was one for 10 in the first half. It was amazing to see him come back to life, though, as you were saying, Desi. He was really in trouble in that first half, but found himself, found his confidence, and really gave them a chance to come back in the football game. Vince Young wishing he could do something from the sidelines, but he can't. Now watch this. Trent Richardson, the Woo! true freshman for Alabama, untouched. He's 249 <laughs> yards. More speed than Ingram. Look at the hole on the left side. He's a true freshman, too. They're going to get Ingram and Richardson back. Watch this huge hole, untouched, 48 yards. I mean, they have a, a running tandem that I haven't seen in a long time. The guy coach. Vlahos, the center, played very well, Lee. Yes. Next Texas drive. This could have been a play that turned the game around, but Malcolm Williams oh. could not come up with it yeah. in the end zone. Catch should have been made, Desmond. That was a great defensive play. You got to give the DB some, some credit on that play. He made a great play on the ball. When your hands are stretched out like that, a guy comes and rakes across oh, your hands. Greg I think, it's hard to make I think that you're catch. protecting the receivers right there. <laughs> but, yeah, and this was a huge play because on the next play, oh. Javier Arena steps in for the first of his two picks on the slant. Little miscommunication there. The man who whose pick sealed the win over Florida in the end zone against Tebow. There was three men yeah. on that play right there. That was just a bad yeah. read by the That's quarterback. Right. Yeah. You know, early in the game, they were making, they're making Gilbert have to throw a lot of stuff that was tough on him. Here's the you know? play that may have sealed their fate. 15 oh. seconds to go. They try the shovel pass. Marcel Darius, the big fella. Up, yeah, look at the big fella. Get off 28 me. yards. Get off me. Get off me. <laughs> you should have taken a knee, Lee. Oh, that was a bonehead play for the offensive staff. 15 seconds to go. 
45, 50 yards to go against the best defense of Dean Erection. You take a knee! Look at the big guy go. <laughs> take a knee! Look at the athleticism. Oh, <laughs> Gilbert knows he made a mistake. Texas in a huge hole. And here's the news, bad news at the beginning of the third quarter. Well, McCoy will not return to this game. So I asked Mac, how does your game plan change with the true freshman in under center? And he said, look, we just got to find something that he's able to do, simplify, so that we're able to get something out of our offense. McCoy trying to be a leader on the sideline, encourage the young quarterback. And in the third quarter, Texas would turn things around. Jordan Shipley, who had not caught a touchdown in his bowl career, calls this one in. Makes what a miss, and suddenly there's life for Texas. What a great second half. He, he came to life, 10 catches. What a great night. He was really the big, big deal tonight. He Gilbert began to gain some confidence. Yeah, he softened up that defense with some of the passes that Coach Carroll and I talked about at halftime. Some bubble passes, some slants, some screens, and then they went deep to Shipley. And then the onside kick. This is ruled officially what a, what a, a fumble. bounce off a Bama player. Yeah, a great moment right there. Really turned the momentum. You, you could feel Texas. You could really feel the crowd. You could really get them back to the ballgame right here. But the Alabama defense, a couple of crucial stops in the second half, and this is one of them here. Malcolm Williams, again, cannot make the play on the sideline. Texas cannot capitalize on the onside kick. They're forced to punt. Yeah, you can see why the crowd was yelling right there a little bit. A little bit of push right there. Bama didn't get a first down in the third quarter. Ingram was cramping. They got the cramps worked out in the fourth quarter. He comes back in the ballgame, and then Richardson would get going as well. The young guy. He's a tough kid. Uh, you got to like that kid. He's really fast, and he's tough enough to run up inside. Yeah, Richardson runs with a purpose. I mean, he runs almost angry when he yeah. gets the hose. I like, I like him as a freshman, too. You don't see him coming in that young, running that hard. Lee Tiffin from 52 yards. He's had a great season. Could not quite get that one to go. And the score till 24 to 13. Now, over eight minutes to go, third and ten. Shipley would be very active on this drive, and Gilbert looking for him over the middle. Yeah, well, that was really, you could really see the kid after the touchdown pass, he came to life. And then Shipley gets free. Is it a coverage bust? He's in the end zone for a second time. The short corner thought that he had coverage behind him. Yeah. Secondary either, back. Either that or he Let's played see. it really poorly. <laughs> <laughs> He's How looking for safety up there. Yeah. Yeah. So Texas has life. Greg Davis says, let's go for two. Let's cut this lead to three. Gilbert will find Dan Buckner open over the middle. And suddenly, it's 24-21, the Longhorns with 15 straight points. At that point, I think Bama was in trouble. This kid was playing at an all-time high. His confidence was just out, off the charts. They went back to Ingram, though. A methodical drive. Keeps the clock running and shifts the field position. And remember, the play just before the half gave Alabama seven points. He would be behind sure. right now. Sure. On third and eight, Muschamp's defense forces pressure. McElroy throws incomplete. Texas gets the ball back. There was a great momentum swing in the stadium. You know, the Rose Bowl was rocking right there. Here comes the big hit. Eric Anders play. from San Antonio, the blind side, the first sack for Alabama all night, forces the fumble. It's recovered by Upshaw. And Bama's defense makes the play when it has to. What a great hit. Yeah, they had to do that, though. They had to pressure Gilbert because he was he was on fire at that point. Three plays later, third and goal, two minutes to play. Ingram busts in for his second touchdown of the night. Again, yards after contact. He had more than 1,000 of them this season. He had one of them right there. <laughs> and what a dramatic return for Ingham, too. You know, have to sit out the third quarter and come back and finish it off. That, that was really classy. How about that Gatorade bath? Nick never saw it coming and never cracked a smile, Pete. Come on. Yeah, I don't think he's smiling right there. Nick, Nick's mad, I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> I mean, there's not a great deal of elation. It's a very satisfying win for Nick Saban, his oh, second you... national title. But... I think he knows that his team kind of kind of escaped here. Oh, I think it, Nick's got to love this. Now, this is a great accomplishment, a great season, and a great cap, lap, cap off to a fantastic year. It, he's not going to show it, but he's loving every minute of this. 200-yard rushers for Alabama. Ingram with a buck 16. He was the offensive MPP. The freshman Richardson with 109. Greg McElroy, like other Alabama quarterbacks in championship games before him, guys like Jay Barker, Stedman Sheely, they get the win, Lee, but again, yes. not very good statistics. And Alabama just two for 12, converting third down. Passing yards just 58. And Ingram able to, to buck that trend of Heisman winners in BCS championship games joining Matt Leiner. These guys have won the Heisman Trophy and then won a national title in the same season.